Greetings and welcome to my channel, my new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel and today I'm going to chat about the concept of area and how it all came about. So let's begin. Now you'll all know that a long time ago uh, the Greeks began to think about these concepts and they didn't use axioms. They actually derived everything systematically from nothing. There are no axioms in mathematics, in sound mathematics, only in mythmatics, which is things like topology, set theory, real analysis, etc. Okay, so real sound mathematics doesn't need axioms, and there are no axioms in Euclid's elements. The five requirements are not axioms, they can be derived systematically. As I demonstrate in my free ebook, in there's a whole chapter dedicated to that. So you can download my free ebook, to which I'll place a link in the details section. And also remember that I'm moving away from YouTube, so it's going to take a bit of time. But you really need to subscribe to my new BitChu channel, which doesn't uh, uh, censor information and doesn't seek to control information like YouTube does, okay? So um, I will give you links to both and also links to this lovely little applet which I'm using to tell you about area. So the first notion is defined in the elements as a plane, okay? In other words, <clears throat> uh, if we look, if we take a circle which is already derived in one of the five requirements, we can say that a plane is an area that can be spanned by the radius of any given circle. Okay, so that's just a rough definition, but again, in my ebook, I explain very well how to derive the concept of the plane and everything else in the five requirements. Now, that was the first notion. The second notion is that an area is the product of the sides of a rectangle. Okay, so in other words, if you have a rectangle like this, then the area would just be this length multiplied by this length, right? And so uh, a very important part about, a very important aspect about areas is, is that it started early in the uh, concept surrounding symmetry. In other words, what does symmetry mean? It means the attribute of being made up of exactly the same parts or similar parts, okay? So symmetry, again, is a Greek word, and it means with measure, all right, done by measure. Now, uh, so, so this is how it started. And what the Greeks noticed is that if they have any rectangle on the same base, like you see over here. Okay, so let me just put a grid in here, um, like so. So if we, just, if we just do this, like so, and it's that base there has has uh, four blocks, and we can also put four blocks here. And now, uh, of course, any triangle or rectangle on the same base has the same area, okay? And that's very easy to see. So if you wanted to look at this uh, demonstration here, you could just move this across here, and you can see that, right, uh, this here will complete the area. And of course, this part here is just symmetrical to this. Now, we can easily take this uh, little uh, rectangle here and show you that that it's exactly equal to this one and we could fit it in on this side and then chop this part away okay so really the second notion is that area is understood by symmetry okay and naturally the products of uh, the rectangle okay so you can have a rectangle and like this and then just the sides are the the product of the sides are the area now what you have to bear in mind here is that the next notion which is that the area is a product of two arithmetic means says basically this that it doesn't matter how many vertical lines you have in here and how many horizontal lines okay let's say you only got vertical lines it doesn't matter how many you have. The, the, av the arithmetic mean or the average of these lines will always be the side. And similarly, the horizontal lines 
will always be this side here. So that area is generally defined as the product of two arithmetic means, okay? And I said average length, but it's actually the arithmetic mean length of all the horizontal lines. And so this applies to any particular kind of area. It doesn't matter what it is, all right? And I'm going to show you now shortly uh, what that means. So if you look at uh, two of my videos here, uh, this is these are quite advanced topics but this one here is called planature finding surface areas and also volume of a sphere as a product of three arithmetic means so this you can also define volume generally as a product of arithmetic means okay so uh, be sure to watch these two videos especially if you've taken a course in calculus and you'll see how all these things here <clears throat> fit beautifully into place okay now <clears throat> then the next thing is, so we realize that uh, a triangle is always half the half the area of of the uh, of the rectangle that it's on. Okay, so if it's like that, then let's just do this. Okay, so if it's like that, then obviously, you know, it's just going to be a straight line because a straight line has no area, right? Okay, so. So uh, looking at it again like this, all we do is we place this triangle here and we note that this area here is exactly the same as this. So a triangle, um, if you look at it from this perspective, a triangle is always half the area of a rectangle and it doesn't matter how far you stretch it out, okay? So now the next step was to find out how it relates to uh, something, for example, like the area of a circle. So now the idea here is that you take <clears throat> uh, a circumference, half a circumference like this, okay, and you lay out all the different circumferences as the uh, circles get smaller, right? In other words, uh, as as you uh, move from the center towards the end of the circle, which is a radius. So really what you have here is a radius like this, and you'll see that if you do that, it will fill the area of the half triangle, and from this you can find the area of the circle, because it's simply the circumference, or half the circumference, multiplied by the triangle height, okay, so if this is pi r, the half of the circumference is pi r, pi r multiplied by r is the circumference. So now, that's all I wanted to show you there with respect to the basic notions of area and how it came to be. Now, the ancient Greeks didn't have a knowledge of the arithmetic mean. Well, if they did, they didn't state it anywhere in the elements or in any other reference. And so, so, Really, an arithmetic mean is the second most important concept after number. Because an arithmetic mean tells you what the values would be if they were all redistributed, okay, so that they're equal. And, and that's the reason calculus works. So if we take a look at uh, calculus, you'll see that the same thing is happening here. So, for example, to calculate this irregular area, we have to first find a rectangle that contains the area. And that's and this is how we do it. We find the arithmetic mean of all the y-ordinates and multiply it by the interval width, which is the interval width is this pink line, and the arithmetic mean is uh, this blue line here. Okay, the length of this blue line here, which gives us the area. And so it always works the way that uh, I've stated as a general as a general formula for area okay so it doesn't matter what it is it will always stay the same in other words uh, the product of two arithmetic means so going back to uh, these concepts here I actually could have done a little bit more here but I think that's pretty much sufficient um, I would like to offer you once again my free ebook and to encourage you to to become a subscriber on my BitChu channel and hopefully I'll be producing 
more videos in the future all things considered and that's pretty much it so i hope you've enjoyed this presentation and that you've learned something from it and i'm totally out of breath now so i'm going to let you go this is the new calculus channel and my name is john gabriel till next time goodbye